Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. On this video, I'll show you how to manufacture a dye. It's a formulation that I'm going to give up, okay? People have been asking for this formulation all along, so we decided to make it available on the channel. If you're stopping by the channel for the first time, make sure that you subscribe. Smash that like button for me. Also consider dropping us a comment below. So how is this video going to be structured? We're first going to define what is a dye, okay? Then from there we're going to state the requirement of a dye, okay? Because you don't just manufacture a dye, there are requirements that you need to comply with. After that, we're going to state the different types of a dye. There are many, okay? We're going to state them. Then from there, we're going to describe a particular type of a dye which is the temporary air dye. We're first going to define what is air dye, okay? Then from there, we're going to state the requirement of an air dye, okay? Because you don't just manufacture air dye, there are requirements that you need to comply with. After that, we're going to state the different types of air dye. There are many, okay? We're going to state them. Then from there, we're going to describe a particular type of air dye, which is the temporary air dye, okay? And then our last part of the video, we're going to give out the temporary air dye crayon formulation, and we're also going to give out the preparation method. That's it, okay? So let's start by defining what is air dye. Air dye, it's a cosmetic or synthetic substance used to change the color of air. That's the simplest definition, okay? That's it. Now, let us speak of the requirement of an air dye, okay? You don't just manufacture air dye, no. There are requirements that you have to comply with if you really wish to manufacture a quality air dye, okay? Let's say requirement of an air dye. requirement of an air dye. So what are the requirements of air dye? The requirements are the air dye must color the air evenly, okay? Which means uniformly. After applying the dye, the whole hair must have a uniform color. The air dye must maintain natural moisture of air. Okay? It must also maintain natural brightness of air. It must be non-toxic in nature. It must be non-irritant. Okay? And while manufacturing your air dye, you must have a stable formulation. Another point, the air dye must be water, sunlight, sweat, or shampoo resistant once applied on Hey, that's it, okay? Now, we can move on to the next point, which is different types of air dye, okay? Let us state the different types of air dye, then from there, we're going to describe a particular type of air dye, which is the temporary air dye, okay? Then from there, we're going to give out some few formulation of different types of temporary air dye. So let us start by stating the different types of air dye, okay? Next point. Different types of air dye. So what are the different types of air dye? The different types of air dye are, we do have temporary air dyes, semi-permanent air dye, gradual air dye, natural air dye, okay? We also have the oxidative dyeing system. Into these categories of oxidative dyeing system, we also have a kind of permanent and semi-permanent air dye. That's it, okay? These are the different type of air dye. On this video, we're going to describe the temporary air dye, okay? What is it that we're going to show you? We're going to describe and give a formulation of temporary air dye, okay? The formulation that we're going to give out are particularly the powder formulation, shampoo formulation, and crayon formulation. Now, let's start by describing 
what is the temporary edai? They are mostly made out of leaves preparations. After being applied on air, air is not rinsed off with water. Why? Simply because the dye is easily removed while washing using a shampoo, as the dye cannot enter into the context of air. Okay? The temporary air dyes are available in different forms like powders, shampoos, liquid, and crayons. That's it. I'll take you through the ingredients, okay? Show you in which sequence to mix them and the related amount of each in terms of ratios. So what are the ingredients that you need to consider to manufacture this? The ingredients are, we do have the tartaric acid, okay? Please note that this is done by mass, okay? Let us consider making or manufacturing 100 kg of temporary air dye powder formulation, okay? The first ingredient to consider is the tartaric acid. This should be 94% of the total mass, okay? Out of the 100 kg that we're manufacturing, we need to consider 94 kg of tartaric acid. The next ingredient, you need to consider using a certified color of your choice. This should be 6% of the total mass. Out of the 100 kg of temporary air dye powder formulation that we're manufacturing, you need to consider 6 kg of certified color. By doing this, you actually obtain 100 kg of temporary air dye Okay. The powder formulation. That's it. Please note that you need to apply the product on wet air after a shampoo wash. Okay. You need to consider using about 250 grams of the product dissolved into a reasonable amount of water. Now, let us go to number two, okay? Whereby we're going to give out the temporary air dye shampoo formulation. So what are the ingredients that you need to manufacture the temporary air dye using the shampoo formulation? The ingredients are, we do have water, okay? Before going further on, please note that this is done by volume. Okay, and uh, as we said, the first ingredient is water. The amount of water should be 69% of the total volume. Let us consider manufacturing or making 100 liters of temporary air dye shampoo formulation. So the amount of water should be 69% of the total volume. Out of the 100 liters that we manufacturing, we need to consider 69 liters of water. The next ingredient is the cocoa dye ethanol amide. This should be 2% of the total volume, okay? Out of the 100 liters that we manufacture, you make sure that you consider 2 liters of cocoa dye ethanol amide. Then the next ingredient is the ammonium lorry alcohol sulfate. This should be 29% of the total volume. Out of the 100 liters of temporary air dye shampoo formulation that we make, you need to consider 29 liters of ammonium lorry alcohol sulfate. By doing this, you actually obtain 100 liters of temporary ether shampoo formulation. That's it. Now, let us get to number three, okay? When are we going to give out the formulation on temporary edda, but this time, the crayon formulation. Here we go. So what are the ingredients that you need to manufacture the temporary edda crayon formulation? This is done by mass, okay? The ingredients are, we do have stearic acid, this should be 14% of the total mass. Let us consider manufacturing 100 kg. We need to consider 14 kg 
of stearic acid. The next ingredient is triethylamine, okay? This should be 8% of the total mass, so we need to consider about 8 liters. The next ingredient is the canuba. This should be 12% of the total mass out of the 100 kg of temporary egg that cream formulation that we manufacturing. We need to consider 12 kg of canuba. The next ingredient is the beeswax. This should be 50% of the total mass, so we need to consider 50 kg. The next ingredient is also carried. This should be 8% of the total mass, okay? Out of the 100 kg that we're manufacturing, we need to consider 8 kg of ozo carrot. That's it. Then the next ingredient is glycerol mono stearate. This should be 6% of the total mass, okay? So we need to consider 6 kg. The next ingredient is the tragacan. This should be 2% of the total mass out of the 100 kg of temporary dye Clear formulation that we manufacturing, we need to consider 2 kg of tanker cat, okay? Then the next ingredient is the color, okay? This should be QS, which simply means quantity sufficient, okay? And you decide on the color of your choice. By doing this, you actually obtain 100 kg of temporary. A dye, okay. This is the crayon formulation, as we said. Okay, guys, these are the ingredients that you need to consider to manufacture the temporary a dye crayon formulation. Okay, but uh, there is a particular way of manufacturing this. You don't just mix ingredients, no. Okay, I'll take you through the manufacturing process through the method whereby we're going to explain each and every step. Make sure that you remain tuned till the end so that you can learn this. Here we go with step one. On step one, glycerin monoesterate, triethanolamide and tragacant need to be eaten to a temperature of 70 Celsius degree. On step two, stearic acid need to be added to the previous mixture. What do we mean by the previous mixture? It's simply the mixture that you actually did on step one. Then you need to eat everything to 75 degrees. Okay, everything you mean after adding stearic acid to the previous mixture. That's it. On step number three, beeswax and canuba wax need to be melted separately at about a temperature of 70 to 80 Celsius degree. That's it. On step number four, the molten waxes from step three are added to the mixture on step two. Then color is added. Then step five, which is the last step, the mixture can be poured into the mold, okay? You can always decide on the mold of your choice according to a desired shape. That's it. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel. Remember that we're here to add value, okay? To give you knowledge so that you can consider starting your own business. Make sure that you like our videos, share them, and also suggest the channel to people you know with the interest of learning. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure that you subscribe and see you on the next video.